This episode is sponsored by Wix. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history to create a website now. The mummified bodies used as landmarks on Mount Everest. While Mount Everest offers death at every corner, mountaineers continue to try to scale it. It is unknown how many bodies are on the mountain, but some say there are more than 200. There are several dangers. The higher the climber gets to the summit, the stronger the winds become, which can blow a climber off the mountain, sending them plummeting to their deaths. Lower oxygen levels also make breathing difficult, and a climber may stop for a brief rest only to never wake up again. Frostbite can also occur in minutes. The corpses of the unlucky victims of Everest are well preserved due to the cold climate posed in their last moments in the clothing they set off with on their way to the summit, frozen in time. The rescue of an incapacitated person is so dangerous when high up the mountain that attempting it can result in your own death. So the bodies are often left where the person died. One of the first attempts to reach the summit of Mount Everest was by George Mallory, who was part of a number of British expeditions in the 1920s. In 1924, along with Andrew Irvine, he set off from advanced base camp, never to return. Apart from his ice axe and an oxygen cylinder, Irvine has never been found. Mallory's body was discovered in 1999, his corpse still preserved but sun-bleached, with a taut rope around his waist and a puncture in the front of the skull. It is suggested that the pair fell and the axe struck Mallory in the head. The most famous corpse is Green Boots, thought to be Suwong Paujor, who was an Indian climber who died in 1996. A deadly year in Everest's history, which would see 15 people die trying to reach the summit. He became separated from his party when he sought shelter in an open-mouthed cave. At 8,500 meters, or 27,900 feet, he shivered in the cold until he died in a fetal position, wearing fluorescent green mountaineering boots. Every climber attempting the Northeast Ridge route to the summit will pass green boots. In 2006, English climber David Sharp would do just this, stopping in the cave to rest. He froze in a sitting down position, unable to move, and appeared to have a severely frostbitten nose, but was still alive. Sharp had opted to climb alone without a Sherpa and without enough oxygen and no radio to call for help. Around 40 climbers passed him by either missing him or assuming he was dead, potentially mistaking him for green boots. Some climbers eventually found Sharp and tried to supply supplementary oxygen. However, because he could not get up to continue, he had to be left to die. Francis Arsentiev and her husband Sergei Arsentiev were part of a climbing group descending back to camp from 8,000 meters high. But they had to do it during the night and on low oxygen supplies, which was incredibly dangerous. At one point she went missing and Sergei chose to turn back to look for her, despite the dangers. On the way, he passed a team of Uzbek climbers. They had found her alive and frostbitten, but she could not move, so they tried to move her down as far as they could, until their own oxygen also depleted to dangerous levels, forcing them to give up their rescue. Francis and Sergei would not make it back to base camp. The next morning, Ian Woodall and Cathy O'Dowd, along with several Uzbeks, discovered Francis still alive pleading for help. However, the difficult location and minus 30 temperature eventually forced them to abandon the rescue, where she would die. Sergei's body was later discovered by the same team who found George Mallory. Today, the preserved mummified bodies on Mount Everest are used as markers by climbers as they aim towards the summit, a grisly reminder of the dangers the mountain poses. This Simple History episode was brought to you by Wix. Climbing to the top of Mount Everest is an almost impossible achievement, but what isn't impossible is website building, made possible by Wix. Wix helps you climb to the top to get your name, project, or business out into the world. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history to create a professional site regardless of your skill level. Wix has great features to bring your site to life, such as Wix videos, Wix Pro Gallery, Wix bookings, and solutions for all kinds of sites, such as e-commerce, music, hotels, events, restaurants, and more. Build your own website and support the Simple History channel 
by going to wix.com forward slash go forward slash simple history or simply click the link in the description below to get started.